Do you love trains? Do you want to go look at some? Today is your lucky day because we're going on a very special field trip. We're going to the Colorado Railroad Museum to look at all their cool trains and to learn something about railroads and the way trains work. The Colorado Railroad Museum has all kinds of trains, from small model trains all the way up to gigantic engines. They have trains you can ride and trains that need some TLC and cars from the engine to the caboose. They have a lot of trains. When you think of trains, the first thing you probably think of is those great big locomotives. After all, without the locomotive, the train can't go anywhere. There are a few different kinds of locomotives at the museum. We're gonna talk about the steam locomotives and the diesel locomotives. Steam trains work by burning coal to create steam. Remember, water turns into steam when it gets hot and then using that steam to push pistons in the engine. Diesel trains use diesel fuel to power their internal combustion engines, just like your car or truck. The original locomotives were all steam engines, but between about 1930 and 1960, most railroads switched from steam engines to diesel engines. The Colorado Railroad Museum has both kinds of engines and they have locomotives in all sizes from this tiny one all the way up to this massive one. Look at how big these wheels are. Those massive locomotives are what we need to haul all the other kinds of cars that make up trains. Today, most of the trains that I see moving through the American West where I live are hauling cargo. They're bringing things to factories to make more items, or they're bringing things across the country to people like you and I who maybe ordered them online or through the mail. But back in the day, trains were the fanciest way to travel. You could sleep in your own private car. And if you forgot anything, the train carried spares just like hotels today. Would you wanna sleep in this bunk? Maybe not, but it was considered luxury during the mid to late 1800s. It was the way to travel. And sleeping in cars wasn't the only luxury on the trains. You could have dinner served on fine china in the dining car. If dinner was being served on the train, someone had to be cooking it, right? Trains had kitchen cars for preparing the food. These cars were cramped and hot. Look at how small it is. Mr. John couldn't even stand up straight in the car. Imagine working in this tiny space for hours on end with your head cranked like that. This kitchen car has two cooking stations, storage for some food, and space for cooks to prep the food. Not much space to prepare a whole lot of food. Kitchen cars also had to be able to provide food for the railroad workers, and not just workers on the train itself, but the workers who were helping to keep the tracks clear and safe and in good shape. Speaking of the workers, where did they stay aboard the train? There wasn't room for them to sleep in the locomotive or the kitchen car, and I'm guessing they didn't get to sleep in the fancy bunk beds. But they did need a place to rest, right? That's where the caboose comes in. The caboose was a place for the conductor to fill out his paperwork, for everyone to get a little bit of rest and stay comfy. It was kind of a home away from home. It was also a place to keep an eye on all the train cars. Check out this view. From the cupola, the conductor could watch all the cars in front of him and make sure everything was running smoothly, was safe, and just the way it should be. It was important to make sure that everything on the train was safe and smooth and running well. Lots of things could go wrong. There could be a fire. Part of the train car could break. There could be something on the track. Lots of things could go wrong and tons of money and lives were at stake. Now the conductor could watch his train from the caboose, but what about the other trains? Wouldn't he and the engineer need to know if another train was coming? Or what if there was something blocking the tracks ahead? Today, we have radios and other ways to talk to each other, but what happened before radios? How did conductors and engineers get the information they needed? They got it through a bunch of different signaling methods. Using those different codes, workers could talk to each other without words. They used flags, lights, and even the train whistle to send messages to each other and keep everyone up to date on what was happening on the tracks, making sure everyone was safe and sound. But what if something went wrong and something did happen to the train? Or what if it just needed some basic maintenance like an oil change on your car? That's what roundhouses are for. 
A roundhouse is the huge circular building that railroads built around the turntables at the end of lines. Locomotives today can usually move both backward and forward. That wasn't always the case. And before locomotives could move backward, there had to be some way to turn them around. A locomotive that could only go forward would get stuck at the end of the line and that doesn't help anyone. So, turntables. Look at how big this one is. And see that rail down below? That rail means that the entire thing can move around to whatever track it needs to connect with. Once the locomotive or the car or whatever needs it connected to the roundhouse tracks, it followed those tracks into the roundhouse. Inside the roundhouse, the trains can get whatever they need, whether it's a place to be stored or repair, full on restoration. If they need it, it can happen in the roundhouse. At the Colorado Railroad Museum, they restore engines and cars in the roundhouse. If you want, you can go in and hang out in a special viewing area to watch them work. It is so cool. Even with all the locomotives and passenger cars and cabooses and boxcars and all the other stuff that we showed you, we weren't able to show you even half of what the Colorado Railroad Museum has. And we didn't have time to talk about all the cool history or the exhibits or to ride the train. I bet we'll have to do another video in the future. If you want to see that, make sure to hit subscribe and to ring the notification bell so you don't miss it. And if you want to go on some other virtual field trips, check out this playlist while you're waiting for the new ones. See you soon.